Good morning, boys. Happy Thursday. I'm back with chapter two of our hot air balloon mystery. This one's called Grandfather's News. I got some awesome predictions and conversations with you guys yesterday, and I can't wait to see everybody else on Friday. So I look forward to talking about the book. Adam, I thought that was a really cool prediction you had. Look forward to seeing what everyone else is thinking about our new book. So without further ado, here comes chapter two, Grandfather's News. Once the basket and balloon were secured in a small trailer, Skye said to the Aldens, Let's hope we meet again soon. Then she got into Pete Moran's station wagon. The, landing in, the landing's in was written on its side. As it pulled out of the driveway, Pete, Skye, and Matt waved. The Aldens waved back. Then they went inside. Let's call Grandfather, Benny suggested. He was bursting to tell him all about the balloon rally. No, Benny, Jesse said. We'll have to wait to tell him about the rally until he comes home. Benny groaned. Waiting always seemed to take longer than anything else. Look here, Henry said. He picked up a newspaper from a chair. It was called the Landing Times. Pete must have left it. Does it say anything about the rally, Violet asked? Henry turned the page. Here's an ad for the inn, he read. The Landing's Inn. Best bed and breakfast in the country. Breakfast, Benny asked. What about lunch and dinner? Jesse laughed. I'm sure they wouldn't let you starve, Benny. Oh, here's something about the rally, Henry said. It's an editorial. He read the article to himself. What does it say, Violet asked. Mostly it asks questions, Henry answered. Does Lloyd's Landing want this new business? He quoted. What will ballooning do to a peaceful community? Is it safe? It goes on like that. Does it give any answers? Jesse wanted to know. No answers, Henry responded. It just says the townspeople should consider these questions. Why wouldn't the town want ballooning? Benny wondered aloud. It looks like so much fun. Is it safe? Violet asked. If you're trained properly, it's safe, Jesse said. What could ballooning do to Lloyd's Landing? Benny asked. It could bring lots of people to town, Violet suggested. That could be good for other businesses, Jesse said. Benny nodded. People have to eat, he said. And that could be good for the restaurants. And they have to sleep, Henry said. So that could be good for the motels and inns, Violet concluded. The Aldens couldn't think of a single reason why anyone would object to a hot air balloon business in their town. I suppose some people don't like new things, Henry said. The door flew open and Grandfather rushed in. I have good news, he announced. Benny jumped up. So do we. Violet poked him. Grandfather first, she said. Grandfather pulled out a chair and sat down. Do you remember Lloyd's Landing, he asked. The children looked at each other. Could Grandfather's news have something to do with the balloon rally? Barely able to contain their excitement, they all said, yes. I've just learned that there will be a hot air balloon rally there this weekend, Mr. Alden continued. I left work early to tell you about it. The younger Aldens began to laugh. Grandfather looked puzzled. What's so funny, he asked. We know all about the rally, Benny answered. Henry told him about the hot air balloon landing in the yard. Grandfather laughed. I can never surprise you, he said. You're just too smart for me. Then his tone grew serious. I don't suppose you want to go to the rally. You're all so busy. But his eyes were twinkling. We want to go, Benny exclaimed. We want to go. There's one problem, Mr. Alden said. I'm sure. I'm not sure there will be a place to stay, and driving back and forth every day would not be practical. Jesse told him about Pete Moran and his invitation to stay at the Landings Inn for the weekend. That settles it. It will be so good to see Pete after all these years, Grandfather said. Here's Grandfather talking to the Alden children. Jesse, Henry, and Violet there behind him, and Benny excited, dancing in the front. May Sue Lee come with us, Violet asked. Seven-year-old Sue Lee was the Alden's cousin. She had been adopted by cousins Joe and Alice. Of course, Mr. Alden said. And we'll ask Joe and Alice to take care of Watch. He went to the phone. I'll call the inn to tell them that the will be there bright and early tomorrow morning. You see, Benny said, I knew Grandfather would let us go. Late the next morning, Mr. Alden swung the station wagon into the landing inn's brick driveway. 
You go on ahead, he told the others. Henry and I will bring in the luggage. Benny hopped out of the car. Sue Lee, Violet, and Jesse followed. They paraded up the wide stairs and across the open porch to the carved wood double doors. One of them was ajar. Should we knock, Benny asked? I think we should just go in, Jesse answered. She pushed open the door and stepped aside to let the others enter. No one was in the large entry hall. What do we do now, Benny whispered. Shh, Jesse said. She pointed toward a set of closed doors across the hall. Behind them, the sound of voices rose and fell. Someone was arguing. Mary, you're wrong, one voice said. I've made up my mind, another voice said. I'll never understand you, Barbara. Sometimes we just have to do what we have to do, the first voice said. Then Grandfather and Henry came in. Anyone here, Mr. Alden called. The voices hushed, then silence. Suddenly the doors to the closed room slid open and an older woman came out and rushed down the hall and out the side door. She had stopped for a moment to adjust her clothes, her hair, her clothes, everything about her was neat and clean. Shortly after, another woman came out to greet them. Grandfather Alden giant stepped across the room. Barbara, he said, and he gave her a big hug. It is so nice to see you. The woman smiled, but her eyes were sad. It is good to see you too, she said. Mr. Alden introduced the children. This is Barbara Moran, Pete's wife, he said. She and Pete own the inn. Welcome, Barbara said. Your rooms are ready. She did not look at them. Instead, she stared out the window and watched the woman with the perfect hair get into her car. Is there something wrong, Barbara? Mr. Alden asked. Where's Pete? Barbara's face reddened. Oh, no, nothing, she answered. I'm just a little upset about something. Pete will be back soon. He just ran out to take care of an errand. I thought he'd be back before you arrived, she smiled. Let me show you to your rooms. She led them up the curved staircase and down a narrow hall. I've given you adjoining rooms and a bath, she said, and opened two doors. Henry and Benny and Mr. Alden went into the room, one room, and Jessie, Violet, and Sue Lee went into the other. The rooms were large, with high ceilings and tall, narrow windows. They were furnished with antiques. Between the two rooms was a big bathroom. Barbara said, if there's anything you need, just ask. It looks like you've thought of everything, Mr. Alden responded. When you're settled, come downstairs. I'll make tea, Barbara said. I hope there's going to be something else besides tea, Benny said when Barbara left. I'm hungry, the others chimed in. Mr. Alden was the first one ready. I'll meet you downstairs, he told Sue Lee and his grandchildren. I'd like to visit with Barbara. After he had gone... Henry said, Barbara seemed strange. Because of the argument, Violet said. Henry looked puzzled. What argument? We heard her arguing with another woman, Suli explained. Before you and Grandfather came in, Jesse added. The other woman, her name was Benny. Her name was Mary, Benny put in. I saw her leave. She was all dressed up. I wonder what they were arguing about, Jesse said. Probably nothing to do with us, Henry said. All right, that's the end of that chapter. Our next one's called Too Many Questions. So um, maybe make a prediction what you think too many questions could be about or where you think our story's headed, why you think there's trouble in um, this town um, over the hot air balloon. So why could that be? Like, um, it seems a little odd that this town would be so against um, people coming. The town's called Lloyd's Landing. I had to look back for it. I knew the landing in, but I, it's called Lloyd's Landing is the town. So I wonder why the people of Lloyd's Landing are questioning having a new business. And it seems like it would help their other businesses. So that's interesting. And then we have too many questions coming up as our next chapter. Um, make more predictions. Keep listening to the story. Keep thinking about the characters. I know we met a couple new characters today, Barbara and Sue Lee. I had never met Sue Lee in any of the other books, so she's a new character to me. I hope you guys have a great Thursday and work hard. Hopefully it gets nicer out. It looks like it rained last night, so I'm not sure if we'll be able to get outside today, but hopefully. 
All right, guys. I will see you all tomorrow. I look forward to it. Bye, guys. Bye. Love you, bye.